it's absolutely true that I led a wild childhood. I mean, I guess it started at age six when I, when I um, tore the, the locomotive for this electric train set. I'd just gotten for Christmas apart to get the electric motor out. And I think my, my parents didn't scold me. Uh, I think my father was quite fascinated with my fascination. And uh, as time went on, I, I th he was a physician in town, and, and his patients would obviously give him things to give to me. So, so I was one of five children. I don't know if they all got quite that much attention, but but uh, uh, you know he, you know some of these th things like a box of of parts from the telephone company and a box of magnets and stuff like this and. And I just found all of this stuff so fascinating. And, there was uh, once an explosion, and you came running up with oh, oh. in your face. <laughs> you know, this was, uh, you know, I can't remember who told me. You could buy calcium carbide at a hardware store. It was, you, the idea was to put it in moles runways, and the, the uh, generates acetylene gas when the, when the calcium carbide gets in contact with water, and that would sort of drive out the moles. It, but, but you could uh, take a soda pop bottle, fill it mostly full of water, drop in one of these grains of silicon, uh, of calcium carbide, and then jam a rubber stopper with a, with a glass tube with it that, that was pulled to a fine point. So there's just a very small orifice. And then you have to wait until all the oxygen was out of the bottle. And then you would light this, and you get this intense white flame. And this is essentially a miner's lamp. And it was fun. But it would go for, I don't know, a minute or something or less. And then the, you'd have to open it up and put another one in. And so I thought I would make one kind of differently that would run for hours. So I took a 500 milliliter uh, beaker and uh, uh, filled it full of calcium carbide. And then, then put a, uh, I had a long burette. So there was a, so it would drip uh, water into this thing, and then there was a, a delivery tube. And, and I didn't think about the fact that there was such a much larger volume in this thing, so I, I waited what seemed like an appropriate period of time, and then I lit this, and I got a, a blue flame rather than this, this brilliant white flame. And I instinctively knew enough to move my head like this, this thing blew up. I think I went, went like this, and it blew up, and, and I had glass in the side of my face, which would have gone in my eye if I hadn't been luckier. And, and so my mother was up fixing dinner, and, and she hears this explosion downstairs, and she comes to the top of the stairs. I was in the basement, and, and so I'm coming up the stairs, cupping my hands to keep the blood from dripping on the carpet. And, and I was so famous for practical jokes that she, of course, couldn't trust anything I did. So she says, if you're kidding, I'm, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I was old enough to drive, and I drove myself down to my father's office, and he s sewed up the largest of the cuts. And, and this had happened so many times before. 